Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Uh, on your screen you will see the ghost image of uh, the last video where I made a huge mistake uh, by forgetting to remove my paper stencils. Anyway, this is the uh, remnants of the uh, the ink or the paint and I'm going to do an experiment uh, to see if I can salvage this because it's it's an interesting texture um, I, I haven't done this before because this has dried overnight and I am wondering if it will still transfer after being so dry so uh, I'm going to use this Artist Loft paint. It's called Parchment. Um, I thought I'd give it a try. It's not exactly white, but this way I can tell if the paint had transferred to the paper. Um, so I'm just going to use this almost white paint and roll it on the plate. I'm going to see if I can activate the dried out paint from last night. And if I fail, that's, you know, I scratch it off to one more lesson learned. Uh, there's only so much salvaging that you can do, but you won't know until you've tried it. So uh, I'm going to give it a whirl. And I may have to leave this on the paper for a while. I have seen other YouTube artists leave their paper on their plate for like half an hour, sometimes even overnight. So I'll see how, how this works out. Okay, just gonna do a little clean up with my rag. And here is a fresh piece of Somerset paper, which I like to use. And I'm doing this with an open mind. If it does not work out, I'll figure out something else. And I thought to myself, you know, worse comes to worse, I'll just end up with a plain blank background, which is not so bad either. I can always add hand-drawn elements or collage or both. I've even seen one artist, uh, I forget his name, 
be even used as a hair dryer that might activate the paint somehow. Uh, I'm hesitant to do that. Um, otherwise I would try it, but I'll see how I can do without any special devices. Okay, I'm gonna take a peek. Oh, what do you know? Very interesting uh, from what I have seen from the corner that I peeked. Okay, just making sure that the entire surface of the plate has been pressed to the paper. Okay, this is a moment of truth. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you can't see yet, but I can tell that it has transferred nicely. So nicely, in fact, that the plate is fighting me. Oh, I have to be very careful, I might I don't want to tear this paper. Yep, it's already tearing. The last thing I need is a big hole in my print. I remember when I was in art class and one of the most memorable things my professor had said when she was demonstrating something that she wasn't supposed to do and she would say, never do this. And it's funny, of all the lessons I've learned is what she said. This is really tough. Some parts of the print have already ripped. But I think the result is pretty spectacular, which I will show you in a few minutes. If I can get this thing off. Ugh. I think the, the textures and subtleties are remarkable. Totally unexpected from an accident. Almost there. Oh, I, I think I ripped the top of the print. There we go. Oh, that was tough. I like this. It's like an etching. Uh, in uh, printmaking classes, I uh, have done all kinds of methods. Lith lithography, there's etching, there's silk screen, and I, and there were no jelly plates at that time. 
but I have to say this print looks very much like an etching on a copper plate. And to do that, you need a copper plate, you need special inks, and you need a heavy printing press. But I think this result is pretty cool and totally unexpected for a mistake. Here's a close up. In fact, the, um, I think the textures are so fine and so delicate that it's hard to believe this was made by a jelly plate. And so, uh, you know, I, I disagree with some critics who say you can't produce serious art with a gel plate. Uh, here is proof that uh, this print, I think, can stand alone or knowing myself, I can't leave well enough alone. I will probably put some collage and some hand-drawn elements uh, to complete the picture. There are even traces of yellow, which is the residue of uh, many, many printings prior. So anyways, I will let this dry. This is almost dry. Uh, it's amazing how much the paper absorbed all the moisture in so short a time. So you learn something every day. So I'll start with this piece of copy paper with uh, mixed lines, which I made on my paint program. Now this, this is sturdier so I can use the, the glue, gluing pad. It's like a modified X. And as a mannerism of mine, I like X's and O's as graphic elements. Okay, that's one. Um, I will do the this piece next. The nice thing about Mod Podge is since it's invisible, I don't need to be super careful about the drips because once it dries, it disappears. Uh, especially when, when you're dealing with a difficult shape like this. Okay. It's a little bit of creasing because when the paper gets wet, it tends to lose its shape. And sometimes that's the reason why you need to work quickly. Okay, there. Now I will do the black circle. Okay, 
Okay, this is tricky. Okay, got it. Okay, that's the bottom. Now I will work on the top piece. And decide whether this looks better this way. This is the reverse. This is right side up. I think I'll do right side up. Again, this is tissue, so I can't play with it too much. This is the ripped part. And I'm hoping this will solve that problem. Kind of like a band-aid. I'm glad that this ink is not smearing. There we go. Okay. Let me center this in the camera frame so you can see. Uh, I I think for an accident, this looks pretty good, if, if I may say so myself. And I was able to salvage the ghost image. Uh, that will give me a lesson for next time. Sometimes when I want to do this effect, um, I don't have to worry if the ink had dried on the gel plate. It will still transfer uh, as demonstrated in this video so anyways uh, thank you for watching this uh, salvage effort and uh, I'm quite happy with it and thank you for subscribing and watching please share please like and I hope to see you next time